Hello and welcome to How to Start a Board Game Company from Off the Page Games. I'm Jay Cormier. Now this week I want to talk about what it's like working with an artist, but specifically I'm going to do that by going through the different versions of the board art and talk about all the feedback that I gave the artist and how we worked together and collaborated to make an even better product in the end run, which is amazing. So at, uh, by the end of this, I have some brand new board art that we're going to show off. Uh, so you can fast forward to that if you want. No, don't do that. Watch the whole video, whatever. Uh, let's take a look starting at the very first board that I made for the game and we'll go through the reasons why we, we change it. And then once we get the artists involved, uh, you'll see how much it improves. Let's take a look. Okay, so this is uh, this is the very first board art I had. Now, when we first designed the game, the board art was um, tiles, and you would uh, each of these squares was a tile, and uh, yeah, it's very clip arty. I know this is this is how I make my prototypes. Um, so each tile uh, had two different things in each tile. So this had a red trash can and a brick wall with some circle graffiti. This had a green car and yellow trash can and there'd be pages and pages of these, uh, and then you would lay them out. Um, so that was the first iteration of this. Uh, everything had to be very easy to, to kind of see, and this actually proved to not be very easy to see, and so we upgraded it to this kind of perspective, so it's now like an isometric perspe perspective, which was visually a lot more pleasing. Um, and then we have things like a fire station, and we still had graffiti, but now on billboards and cars. And it's still clip art, but it's definitely a lot cleaner, and it was definitely a lot easier to see things out, but they were still tiles. Um, and then you can see these little um, do not walk kind of things were printed right on some of the tiles. That proved to be a nuisance, and we ended up taking them off entirely once we got to the actual board. So this was um, the board that we kind of used for a long period of the playtesting. You can see this is now an actual board instead of tiles, so the setup was a lot faster. And it's the same kind of idea though. We have two spots we uh, for each thing, so two features in each block, in each location. Um, it's very easy to see. If you had to look at this even from, kind of zoom out a little bit, if you had to say, hey, where are all the uh, orange trucks? You could go, well, there's one, two, three, four, five. It's very easy to just, if you call out something, a blue car. There's one, two, three, four, five. You can see them pretty easily. Uh, and that was kind of key for the functionality of the game. You need to be able to do that. And these things at the time were called parks. Uh, and you can uh, go in and out them diagonally. Otherwise, you're only allowed to move orthogonally. We kind of added this, A, B, C, D, E, F, and the 1, 2, the 7. Uh, it's not used in the game. There's no coordinates in the game. But sometimes it's uh, easy to refer to. Yeah, okay, and D4, blah, blah, blah. You can actually kind of help pinpoint because the my management player is looking at a, a separate board that's exactly like this one. Um, but smaller and so sometimes uh, those coordinates help and then this area up in the top left corner was an area where you can place your token so you weren't covering up the uh, the big icons uh, because sometimes you really need to see well where is another one of those orange trucks and uh, if you put your token right there over top of it, it can it can kind of uh, not be good so this is exactly what I use this is the kind of art I would use to pitch to a publisher and did pitch this game to a publisher um, with this exact art um, not great, but very, very, very functional, and it helps make the game work. Uh, so now, that's that's that. Now we go to uh, the, the art that we have from... Uh, once we finally got Matt Kint uh, doing some art, he gave us this one. Now this already looks amazing. It looks really cool. Uh, so you can see what he did here. He still has that in the top left corner. There's a space where you can put your tokens. And you can see that he really adhered to our desires as far as making this, ensuring this was functional. And you can see, like, there's a coffee, there's a coffee, there's a coffee, there's a coffee, and there's a coffee. You can see, still see all five of all the different things really easily. Uh, and the watercolor looks really neat, and the coloring looks really great. Uh, these now, instead of parks, are turned into temples. Um, the one feedback we gave here was... Uh, temples can be moved on through diagonally and orthogonally. So this kind of implied it could only move diagonally. So we asked them to, to change that. And so while we like the kind of feel of it, the color of it, and I'll talk about this stuff on the side in a minute. Now, while this looks really cool, like on your screen, kind of this size, when we zoom in, uh, we start to see that it's very Matt Kinty, and that's a good thing. But for a, a board that you're going to look at, the detail just wasn't there. It's not very exciting. And this was interesting uh, collaborating with Matt. I like how he did with the uh, streets that he kind of gave this background to them and they're all kind of jagged. That's kind of neat. But uh, we had some issues. So some issues here were that um, uh, when we gave Matt the directions, we said, listen, 
everything needs to be visible. We can't have too much clutter, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, that was just frustrating for his his style that he, it limited him to do exactly what he did here. Uh, we kind of chatted about well, and it was a really nervous kind of conversation I had with him because. Uh, I really appreciate Matt's art style and Matt himself, and I have two pieces of his artwork hanging in my office right here um, from before ever knowing him, and so I really like his art style. Um, so um, I was trying to figure out how do I how do I tell this guy that I want uh, this to look a bit better, and so I kind of went approached it with from the perspective um, that we got at the same time I believe we got the um, cover art some other art I think I must have been like box cover art which was fantastic and uh, blew me away and I love it entirely and um, so then I kind of leveraged that and I said and I said okay let's talk about the board art and I said now the board art uh, I can imagine that you were I think I said something like you were very um, constrained with the restriction that we gave you that uh, everything needs to be functional we kept kind of really hammering that home with you and um, I think it forced you down a path where you weren't allowed to provide the regular Matt Kent type of detail and um, style that you usually used to. And it was right around this time he just kind of interrupted me and he's like, uh, Jay, just so you like, just to let you know, uh, I don't like it either. And I'm like, oh, okay, phew. So that was good. It was a I, literally a nervous uh, phone call I had to have with him because I didn't know what else to say or what else to do. Uh, but fortunately, he was on the same page. And so uh, this was good enough that we were able to use this to demo at Gen Con and uh, Grand Con and Fan Expo and all these other places uh, because it looks way better than my uh, previous, <laughs> way better than this. This would not attract people to the demo. So this was great that we had this, uh, but he went back to work and started working on some more. Some of the other feedback we gave was that um, uh, these, these kind of uh, telephone lines here, uh, hydro lines, are kind of neat. And it was actually from feedback I gave because uh, these birds uh, to have them sitting on this, but it actually now makes it a bit confused because it, it feels like they have some other function to the game that these wires do something. And on top of that, uh, somebody in the game was actually confused about the difference between a bird and a telephone pole or a hydro pole because here's a hydro pole without birds. And literally when someone was playing once, they asked about, hey, have you ever been to a spot with a hydro pole? And we're like, oh, you can't ask that. <laughs> so uh, that was kind of uh, interesting. It's not one of the key features that are up here. It's birds as a feature. So that it added confusion and it wasn't uh, wasn't good. Now let's talk about this side area here. Now in the original game, we had an entire separate board for this area here. It was an entire separate board, and it did have a little bit more room to do the things you need to do. But it felt a lot easier if we could just merge it into this board. And then it gave us room for this here, which is a list of all the different um, features that are that are in the game. And there is times when you're going to be placing meeples, uh, recruits they're called, on these spots. Um, and so it had some function to it as well. Some of the feedback we got was that it would be great if there was a kind of a known naming convention, like a, a, what every single thing is called. Because some people would say, have you ever been to a tree? Meaning this, but they are looking at these trees. They're like, oh, that's that's confusing. Yeah, you're right. So let's have a naming convention. So I asked Matt if we could kind of brainstorm or come up with names for these types of things. I also gave feedback with regards. He had these really cute, let me zoom in because it's really very mind management-y. He puts this on the side. He says, this is not a test because where we start. And then we get up here and says, this is not the time to be alarmed. And then the time to be alarmed was five moves ago. <laughs> Too late. I think that's really funny and very mind management-y. Uh, mind management <laughs> Uh, in, in the theme that this is just the start of some of the of the flavor and whatnot and you also notice another thing that we've added since the original in the original one we had all these different uh, we had a player aid for um, your your different uh, actions you can do in your turn but now we turn the player aid into um, these categories for the mind management player down here and the rogue agents up here and you actually slide cards underneath um, telling you what you can do and the reason why we changed to that is because uh, with the shift system as you open envelopes because you win or lose the game you're going to be getting new versions of these cards that give you different powers when you do these things and so it allows you to add or swap them out as you get it which is a lot better than just a player aid so uh, it kind of trains the player on how to use this this system so that's kind of cool um, let's see was there any other feedback the coloring was pretty good color stood out like people could see all the different things very easily so that was great uh, but uh, Matt had, had was wondering if he could do a style in which we didn't have roads 
And that kind of like threw me for a loop. I'm like, what? But how everything's on a block. And then he kind of referred to Scythe. And he says, take a look at Scythe. Like it's a nice drawing, a picture, illustration of, of a world. And then there's just a gamey overlay of the hexes, uh, like uh, lines over top of it. I looked at it. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, I think we could do that. That would be totally cool. So now let's unveil the new art from uh, Matt Kint for the board. This looks absolutely amazing. And it's still just in stage one of uh, the board art. It's going to be continued to be refined and tweaked and add more detail added and whatnot, but already it's uh, blowing my mind and it's amazing. Everybody ready? Here it is. So already it looks pretty cool. Let me let me do, do some zoom ins. Check this out. So now it's exactly what he said. It's a, it's a living, breathing city. And this is the city of Zanzibar, FYI. A living, breathing city. Look at this. And he's got these cro these lines going over top of it. Not just, I like that he didn't do it just as a grid. It's kind of like a bulbous, like it's kind of rounded. And it, and it helps with the perspective. Because uh, on this left side, you can see we see the, the uh, right sides of the buildings. And as we get over here, then we see the left sides of the buildings. So the, the perspective changes throughout the picture, which is super cool and awesome. And I totally love that. Um, everything still stands out pretty decently. Um, I did have like just really look how cool this is looking. I'm I'm, I'm just really excited. Um, but uh, I had some issues. I said okay, the pool, the fountain, and the bus are a little bit too similar in color. Can we choose some different colors for that? I said even with the bus, maybe you can go two tones, do two colors. I said the uh, totems could probably make it more orange because the brown is kind of getting it mixed in with the garden and even the paths on this. You see what he did with the uh, the temples. He now you, you it's very clear that you can go diagonally or orthogonally to uh, either the temples. So that's fantastic. And I think I gave feedback here that these monks were too close to here. That it was hard to see. And also the dogs. I don't even know if you've seen the dogs. They're there. They're there. It's hard to see them there. They're there. Those ones are easy to see, but everyone, the rest are a little bit hard. So I, I, I we had a brainstorm like, what can we do uh, to make them stand out a little bit more? And uh, this is all the same. This is all this. He moved to the inside uh, based on my request. Um, these kind of fonts because there are meeples that are placed off the board next to these. Now you can see that there are these lines delineating these areas. Uh, this might get uh, funkified in the future, but this is the concept that these will be um, sections or areas that things will be played next to on the board. And this is kind of similar, but he's updated some of the different features uh, and it looks really cool. And I think I also said, said the bird. The bird green is a little bit similar to the palm tree. Those are the feedbacks I gave. Let me see if there's any other feedback I gave. No, I, I was just too excited about it. Oh, the allies didn't have a little squidgy underneath it. So it's Otherwise, I'm just so excited about this. Look at look at the detail of this stuff. Oh, it's amazing. So then we have uh, a, an even newer version of this. Uh, oh, the other feedback I gave was yes, was that uh, he decided to kind of you can see this kind of fake fold here, this kind of shaded area, and here implying that it's some sort of folded up map or something like that. And I said. Um, I kind of let him decide because uh, I'm cool with it. But I said, it looks like you're going for like some sort of folded up map, which is cool if that's what we want to do. Um, but then I think you have to sell that everywhere. You have to then the edges of this has to be a folded up map. Oh, I guess he kind of did it over here. But this is to me gamey, this capture, push, reveal. And it feels like it should be there. But even the side over here, it should be like a, a map. Uh, pieces. I said, if you want to do that, then fine. Even the, anyways, um, or just get rid of it. So uh, let's see what he did. So here is the most recent board. There's still some, you know, minor tweaks here and that are coming, but this is, uh, you can see some of the things he's changed already just from looking at it. Uh, it looks awesome, but let's, uh, let's zoom in and I'll show you some of the things that he changed. Like some simple things like moving these uh, monks a little further away from the flame. That's great. Uh, he made the uh, buses now are two-tone, a pink and a, a, a like a teal. The uh, fountains now are more greenish, so they definitely pop from that. The birds are, are red, but they don't—they're like a pinkish red, so they don't, they don't mesh with match. Uh, they don't clash with the red of the books. There's a bit more orange in the totems. Um, everything's good, and then he went and added all these words to give a common name for all the different 
So like the Subversion Bookstore, the Dream Bus, the Subliminal Billboard, the Reconnaissance Parrot, the Wish Fountain, Faraday Mine Tree, the Collective Mind Pool, the Thought Shield Umbrella, Distraction Totems, the Hallucinogenetic Torches, Idea Garden, the Flux Coffee Shop, the Observation Monks, C4 Assassination Dogs, the Thought Courier, and the Suggestive Graffiti. <laughs> this is awesome. So this is going to be great for uh, when all the players now will have the same language when referring to different features. That is amazing. And so yeah, so this is the most up-to-date art. Um, only tweaks from here on out will be, I told them that we forgot this uh, parrot is still green instead of red. Uh, and I don't even know if there was any other feedback after this. Everything else looks... He, he is going to um, put more people in the streets and there's going to be some Easter eggs and uh, some secret things hidden in here that will um, be revealed during the game. Oh, the dogs. The dogs he made black. That still might need a little bit of tweaking because they just kind of look like a little black blob, but they're cool because now he added also a... I don't know if he added it or if it was there before. I didn't see it before. I'm going to zoom in uh, one more level. The dogs now are beeping. Beep, beep, beep. I thought it said woof and I've zoomed in and I'm like, oh, it's a beep because they have C4 on them. That's pretty funny. But we might need a little out, like a whitish or tan outline to kind of see them a little bit better. But I think the black is better than the white um, so far. But what a great looking board. That is, I'm just going to zoom around a little bit more so you can see the whole board. Looks like a fully breathing city. Imagine this even with a few more people walking around. This is amazing. So, so far, that's what it's been like working with an artist. So far, it's been uh, easy and great. Uh, but Matt is as motivated and interested in it as I am, not that other artists aren't, uh, but to make this game amazing. Because it's his world that he created with Mind Manager. And he's a big board game fan, so he loves board games. And he's super jacked that this his, his creation is being turned into a board game. So he's all on board and he's excited, which is, makes me excited as well, uh, that I'm helping to add something to this mind management universe and world. Uh, if you haven't checked out the comics, I highly recommend them. They're really uh, fascinating and uh, twisty and clever. And uh, I think uh, I think everyone would like them. So go check them out. But that's it for me from this week from uh, Off the Page Games. Uh, see you next weekend.